how's it going? I'm gonna do a little ride around, quick chat with you to start out this video. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday. It's, uh, it's about noon time, I think. Anyways, the uh, topic of today's video is uh, leaf cleanup setups. Um, over the years, I've had a lot of different uh, leaf vacuums and tarping systems and different types of blowers and, and all that stuff. And uh, equipment is getting better as time goes on. You know, now they've got uh, a lot more people using like ride-on style um, blowers, you know, big, big blowers. And, uh, you know, they have the attachments now that go on the front of your mower. I'm not there yet. I'm still doing uh, just backpack blowers um, and uh, leaf sucker. Um, I have not upgraded yet to an over 18 horsepower unit. Um, I have tried a under 16 horsepower unit in the past. I think it was a. I might even have tried an eight. I didn't buy it, but I think I used one. Um, and I think I had like a 13, uh, which I mean I, I'm not going to call it useless because it, it still was better than barreling. Uh, however, it, it just couldn't handle, you know, a large volume to be efficient enough to make it worth, you know, the purchase and the setup and, you know, everything that's involved to get a efficient leaf sucking setup, uh, you know, on your dump truck or dump trailer or whatever you might have it on. Uh, so if you're gonna take that plunge, I would suggest at least a uh, 16, you know, they're pretty much all 18 horse now, which is the same size physical motor as the 18 horse, I mean as the 16 horse, and they're now 18, so they're basically just getting two more horsepower out of the same engine, uh, which, you know, it's a certain RPM anyways, uh, no matter how many horsepower the motor is, it's still turning the same speed. Um, all it does is allow you to run a bigger, impeller which in turn moves more volume of air um, so it's not like uh, you know they're faster they're just larger impellers so which equates to being faster in the end so uh, today I, I, I am going down to the shop and figuring out what I'm gonna do for uh, closing up the top of my dump trailer uh, my dump trailer if you haven't seen it yet it's a uh, 7x14 dual axle dump trailer, uh, 14,000 GVW, which is plenty for basically stacking up as many leaves as I want in it. And it has the four foot uh, walls on it, uh, full steel four foot walls, uh, where most dump trailers usually have like a, a two or a two and a half foot. And then you would add, uh, you know, some slide in uh, boards or. Uh, you know, stake, in the stake pockets, you'd put some, some upright boards and, and raise up the sides, usually to about four feet, which mine is already at. And I knew that I was never gonna want uh, all the way down the sides to be that small. I shouldn't say never, but certainly not in the foreseeable future. So I decided to, uh, to just take the plunge and, and get the a fixed four foot walls to begin with. So uh, the the problem I have, well, not a problem, but the uh, challenge that I'm faced with right now. Look at that, huh? Some beautiful looking uh, leaves starting to change color here on the on the cape. Of course, there's way better areas than this, but this is uh, just caught my eye. Uh, so uh, the challenge is, uh, you, you know, you gotta you gotta make it kind of airtight, um, or or I should say uh, leaf tight need air to escape so uh, you know most people and including myself I put a, uh, a mesh tarp on the top which allows the air to escape and but filters you know filter it lets the air through and, and it keeps all the dust in the well not all the dust but the dust of the leaves and, and the leaves inside when you're firing up your machine so um, my four foot sides uh, are probably about sufficient you know I still got a good volume being that it's 14 foot long trailer seven foot wide I believe it was about 15 yards if I do the calculations of uh, material handling or holding capacity which is fine 
um, which is the most I'd put in it of say mulch so the four foot I could fill right up to the top with mulch uh, and, and you know and, and also grass and leaves and all that and be within my my limits in the, in the dump trailer but I certainly couldn't uh, fill it up that high with uh, like gravel or uh, fill or loam or anything like that I'm gonna max out about eight yards in that area you know eight you know six to ten yards depending on the type of material uh, before you're overweight so what I'm getting at is the the four foot sides uh, suit my needs all year round um, and could suit my needs uh, for leaves as well uh, the the main reason that I'm considering raising them up to six feet sides is twofold uh, number one the uh, used lightly used leaf loader that I just picked up uh, that I bought a few days back um, has a chute on it a tall chute on it that once it's mounted which I've made already on the back of the dump trailer once it's mounted up to the back of the dump trailer it uh, goes over the top of the four foot sides um, to about 29 inches to the top of the chute so basically if I need to build sides they need to be at least 29 inches higher than the four foot sides that exist there now so i you know originally just said okay well i'm just going to raise it up and that's what i'm going to do uh you know i don't know if i was going to do plywood or two by lumber and uh you know four eight you know four eight uh, two by eights would be uh what is it uh there's seven and a half inches so that'd be 30 inches which would give me that one inch extra just to be able to stick the chute through the hole and uh, and be able to accommodate that or uh, another option I was thinking is if I did not put sides on it and raise it up now of course I'm lowering my capacity but keeping it simpler uh, to the fact where I wouldn't need to be dealing with these sides building them storing them off season and uh, you know just uh, the time and, and money it takes to, to make them um, and, and use them each year so uh, I was thinking about maybe just running the tarp on the forefoot that I have now and facilitating a hole in the tarp um, I would probably have some type of maybe a plywood sandwich a little square that's screwed together through the tarp and then cut the circle out in the center of it just so the tarp uh, doesn't rip or fray and then I'll have that little you know whatever it is eight inch hole on the tarp so by putting the taller sides on it I can make it an enclosed trailer basically where I can pull a regular type of tarp not a mesh tarp that will stop water from getting in over the whole top of it and be able to walk in it freely like it was an enclosed trailer and then water wouldn't you know get in I mean a little a little bit may drip in here and there with the wind and whatnot but for the most part it would keep things out of the weather and then in the winter time I could store you know the walker and you know attachments and you know uh, tools that I just don't need off season um, in it and uh, it would function as that so this is pretty much where we're at now um, I've made this uh, you can see that red box mount that's clipping the uh, leaf loader onto hopefully the Sun's not take a look here yeah that's getting it onto the uh, the back of the door there that I made up and as you can see the chute raises up and like I said it's 29 inches from from the top of the the uh, four foot side in the trailer to the very top of the chute so it's 29 inches from there to there so I figure like I need at least 30 inches to be able to stick that chute through into the expanded sides so we'll see which uh, which I'm gonna do if I'm gonna maybe p take that pipe uh, that would connect onto the chute and bend it downwards and come right through the top and put a hole in the top the tarp and just tarp it the way it is now or if I'm gonna build up the sides which is gonna take me a few hours worth of work and paint them and make them all look good and then I'd be able to go right in the back would have a swinging door on the back um, and then that would allow me to use it as an enclosed trailer in the off season so that's what I'm pretty much uh, trying to figure out that's why uh, I'm making this video kind of talking myself through it maybe I can reference it again in the future if I decide to go the other direction that I choose maybe some things that I don't think about and, uh
So, made a lot of changes recently. Uh, one being that I'm back in the Dodge Cummins that I'm sure you guys hopefully saw the video of. Uh, I still have the same plow that I've had now since last season, uh, which is now going on this Dodge. I did not keep the push plates off of my white Dodge, so I had to purchase another set. I did buy used shop, as you can see, is a absolute mess full of equipment. And uh, so this is the uh, the mount, the Fisher push plate that I bought used. Uh, looks like somebody grinded it down and threw a coat of paint on it. Hopefully, it was POR 15 because it looks like it's pretty rigid paint. Um, but I'm sure this was pretty rusty at one point and somebody kind of refabbed it. But uh, we're going to mount that up on the Dodge. And I've got the wiring harness with the uh, isolation module for the Dodge. Um, and I have the joystick controller, I believe. Get some lights on in here. Yeah. I've got the uh, joystick controller here. So there's our complete setup for the Dodge. Push plates, wiring, uh, it's got the you know headline harness, it's the right, it's got three different connectors. Uh, so that will be a project, probably a video. Um, my motor in my air compressor has died and it uh, probably is because I've painted multiple vehicles and had this inside where I was painting, so a lot of the uh, overspray got all over it and I believe uh, you know it might have just kind of like uh, gummed up the inside or whatever but it's just it's drawing too much um, might do a little video on that um, trying to get arranged here before the weather gets too cold um, I still want to get a wood stove in this corner for heat I have been down here a couple of times where it got down to like 35 using this little space heater um, in the shop and it worked out really well I know in the colder, colder days, I'm probably going to need that and a wood stove to stay warm in here if I need to work down here. But I'm not planning to stay down here. It's just to come down an hour or two if I need to do any work. Um, so I've done some changing around in the shop here. I got rid of these couple of big, huge shelves I had um, and just put a small, thin shelf up top there because that's a good place for storage that's, you know, above head height out of the way. I got my toolbox more accessible to be able to work in and out of the shop. I used to have it way over there that was uh, it was over there because the shop before I had I was working out of this end of the door so it was nice to have the tools close but now this would be the way to go um, I got this other little bench that I had at my my house I brought that down here so I got two benches uh, as you can see everything is just between fixing things and moving things uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done down here I gotta spend some time a buddy of mine had this uh, that he was throwing away he said come get it if you want it I said hell yeah um, I think this is just a Harbor Freight one it's pretty cheap um, and thin but I've always wanted one of these I haven't bought one yet um, and I also probably am gonna get one of these for irrigation parts I don't know maybe to refill or restock irrigation I don't know um, I kind of wanted something portable that I could bring in the truck and not have to come back to the shop for parts but We'll see, but yeah, I got some uh, some of the screws and stuff that I had in here kind of arranged. This is great because uh, usually you end up with a lot of, well, this isn't one, but the little boxes that screws and nails and stuff come in, you have them all over the place and they the cardboard rips, they get wet and the screws are falling on the floor and everything's mixed up. So this is great. So if you're using these types, you can just pull the whole container over with where, where you're working and, and uh, stick them right back on there. Or if you just want to grab a couple, so... I plan on adding some stuff to that in the future, which is good. Uh, I just got this piece of crap shelf down here with some stuff on it. I've just got stuff everywhere between the house and the shop. I'm in the middle of changing over. I just set up, made this uh, one night just a little rack to, you know, stick up all your, uh, all your um, power tools. I got, of course, I got to start practicing using it, huh? Stuff's everywhere. I was down here until dark. And then, uh, so I got that set up just to kind of hold all that stuff. Still got my charging station and everything over here. And actually these batteries are done, so no sense on continuing to charge those. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Just little updates. This is the remnants of um, building that mount for the leaf loader. Um, 
I've got these two brackets that I painted last night um, that I made just out of some flat steel and they're very thin um, for a reason. The plan is um, on this mount that I made, okay, I've got two inch, yes I know, ugly welding. I've got a uh, flux core welder. I don't have a tank of uh, of gas yet so it does make some messy splatter welds but I do get good penetration and I'm able to get a decent strong bead um, but the plan is here uh, these two um, stop this from rocking back and forth and also these rest on the back of the tailgate which takes some of the pressure off as well as up here this clamps around uh, as you can see uh, onto the top of this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill one hole through this right through this, through the other side, and stick one pin that slides right in here with a clip on it right here, and that'll prevent this from being able to lift up or move out or do anything, and uh, that way it can't, can't fall off. So the whole idea on this is one pin, and then I'll bring the skid steer over, grab from underneath, and then just lift it right up and take it right off uh, when I need to take it uh, off at the end of the season. So, uh, now people were saying, um, a couple of people were saying they were interested to see how I'm going to dump this. Um, dumping it no different than I would before. Um, these are very, very strong doors. Um, three really big, good size hinges um, with some serious steel there. I think it's like quarter inch. Um, so the whole idea is this is just going to swing around. Of course, the shop's in the way right there, but this is just going to swing open all the way straight. I'll demonstrate it on this door here. Basically to right here, and then I'll have a chain, kind of like you have a chain right now to latch the door here. But the chain will just go to hold the door in that position right there. And then the leaf loader will be in this area here. And then go ahead and dump it, release the chain, and then close the door back up when it's closed it's it's exactly like this this is not sagging at all this is exactly where it was uh, before I put the leaf sucker on so um, I have uh, no concerns about that strength okay um, so let me set your camera up I want to show you where those two strips of metal are planning to go sorry guys I'm all over the place here I might chop this video up, we'll see. So, my plan is there's a hole right here and a hole right here. Those two metal brackets that I just showed you inside, I'm just going to bolt onto here at a 45 degree angle to the inside of these. So it's basically going to come down, there'll be a hole that drills through this with a bolt and a, and a nut here and the angle bracket will come straight down to here on both sides and what that will do is help uh, support because right now you've got all of this weight overhanging out here and literally there you know this this connection here is the only thing that's holding this um, on here like the mount itself is affixed to the door no problem but uh, you've only got two um, two by two square tubing I believe it was eighth inch thick uh, holding this which would probably be fine, but in time with it bouncing up and down and flexing um, I think it, it would be too much stress on it eventually and, and would probably crack that uh, So again by having those 45 degree angles up to here on both sides with the bolts going through what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to Put a little bit of pressure maybe jack up a little bit just to see if I can get it to flex a little bit to take some of the, the weight off of it and then bolt this up so it's tight so it's already kind of pulling a little bit on these 
brackets uh, when I bolt them down and that'll take off some of the tension of the lower arms and transfer it way up here um, which will you know then again you've got two more pieces of steel that'll hold up so I just want to be super safe that there's no chance the thing could crack or you know break off that's the last thing we would want is that thing uh, rolling down the road that's what I'm working on today too uh, is bolting those up drilling those holes out uh, but this is the pipe I'm talking about that I think is bendable yeah it's definitely bendable so I'm wondering if this can be bent down it's not as long as I thought it was though this might not be an option There's a general idea of what I'm thinking. Of course, this this tarp will be pulled really tight. I'll probably need a couple um, bungees to hold this nice and tight against the sides. It does reach from side to side nice and tight. And as it fills up, it'll probably balloon up, which is fine. Give me a little more capacity, especially in the middle. Um, and then if I had a hole right there uh, for that to just go right into, of course, it would be more up here once the tarp is pulled. Um, I think that would be the quicker and easier way to go as opposed to raising up the sides on this. So I want to see if the tool holder is going to be in the way if I raise the sides. Nope. Okay. I'm able to clear that. Okay. So that's option number one. And then I've only got that much capacity, or like I said, I raise it up to 30 inches. What I'm wondering is how tight these pockets are for two by lumber. Pretty tight. Actually, almost too tight. It's gonna be a real bear to try to get these out once I get them in, but I guess it's better to be tight, right? So that's actually better than I thought it was. Um, I was concerned that if these uh, were a little bit bigger than the actual wood was and it was gonna flop around a lot that uh, these wouldn't be sufficient. It looks like it's a nice tight fit and I could actually just add a little bit of a, a shim on uh, down inside there to tighten up that direction and it's tight that way. Okay. Looks like it's just, just gonna fit. Yeah, that'll fit. A little, just a little quick sanding and I'll be able to top, pop that right in. Won't be easy to get back out though, but if I do build these sides up like I'm talking about, I'm going to keep them on year round. So it won't be an issue to have to take them on and off. So, and then no ending. after I get these sides figured out, or not sides, I have... My backpack blower rack that I want to mount on that trailer. And I've got two green touch gas can holders, one for the two and a half and one for the five gallon, no spill cans. And my thought on that is I don't want anything to stick out past these fenders. Uh, so the smaller one, the 2.5 will fit right on this fender right here, bolted down to the fender. And then I'll probably put my weed whacker string here or something. 
Um, maybe I'll mount it over with the weed whacker, I don't know. Um, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount the backpack blower rack on the front right here uh, on this ridge because there are bolt holes in the center of that. This is pretty solid because uh, I'm not going to mount the backpack blower racks on the side because the side profile will stick out way, way too much as it is. This, this trimmer could get caught on something and I'm sure it will at some point. Um, and the other option was I could put the backpack blower rack on the back here which means it would stay there year round. I don't know if I like that or not there. One reason I think it is better here is if I mount it in the front and you're driving down the road and we get a rainstorm, literally is gonna be driving rain into the blower, which I'm sure could end up getting inside the motor somehow, especially if I'm driving far, not that I drive far, but back here it's a little more sheltered. Uh, so it wouldn't get as much of the rainfall. Uh, the only problem with mounting it here is the exhaust from the leaf loader is blowing right towards it. So I wouldn't want that. Um, I could just put a little metal deflector kind of at an angle like that, which would deflect the exhaust out this way to stay away from there. there oh now's as good a time as any to mention this uh, I forgot who it was some other youtuber mentioned that they have the same issue with the top of their green touch blower rack there's this uh, rubber coating and it's turned to this sticky goo you know this is dirt that's stuck to it because it's so sticky but the actual rubber is super sticky it's almost like it melted in the sun or I don't know what it is but even here it has a little bit of a stick a stick to it and I don't know what that is but this material does not hold up the whole top up here and here uh, turned into a sticky sticky goo and uh, you know I can clean this off and, and it probably look fine but uh, as you see uh, it just stuff keeps sticking to it so I, I just might as well leave it dirty at that point but other than that this has been a pretty good a pretty good rack you can see the uh the mount holes here we've got uh one two three and then one two three so if i just want to mount it on these two mounts right there right into this support right there that'd be a really rigid place for it to go and then i can just take this uh a blower tube holder and uh, bolt that maybe right here so the tube can just come right up here so that's what I'm up to today and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna just have a video of my finished product or I'll chime in along the way um, but I need to get something set up because uh, next week we're gonna start sucking up some leaves and getting some cleanups done um, you know it's not time yet to, to do full final cleanups but there are a few that I want to do uh, a couple cleanups on and start uh, testing out the equipment and make sure everything's good to go the other thing I want to do with this tarp sewn into it is this pocket right here it, it, you can't get into it this side it seems but there's a pocket that you can actually put a, a, a tube a bar a metal bar in here and then you can have it come out farther than the tarp and what you do is you put a couple of big washers on it with a spacer in between and you're able to then it's kind of acts as a roller on each side and when you pull it it'll the rollers will ride right across the top of your sides to be able to tarp it and then you get little hooking mechanisms here and then they come right around and hook right in and then you tighten it up with the ratchet in the front and crank it up there and that pulls the tension on it so it allows you to tie down your tarp quick and easily um, so I want to I want to get that tube get that all in there like it's supposed to be I haven't even used that tarp yet since I got the trailer So and luckily as you can see right through it. It is a, a nice mesh tarp very heavy-duty Which would be perfect for this leaf loader 
My idea in here is I want to have all the landscaping related tools that are going to be in here. Basically from here, down, over, and back. Um, I'm going to do some shelves under here and get stuff loaded under here. I'll get that uh, plate compactor slid under there, my a spreader, uh, my push mower I don't need anymore, so that's probably just going to get, get out of here. Uh, I'll hang up a lot of tools here. This is just going to be uh, rack after rack of, uh, you know, uh, chainsaws, cutoffs, you know, all that stuff. And the idea is when we're loading up for, for a landscaping job, this is this half... This half is kind of the mechanic shop, okay? So everything over here is what you needed if you're doing work and mechanical work, okay? And which is nice because your vehicle's right here, in and out, no problem. Um, what, I tr what I wanted to do is if I'm in the middle of a project or doing something down here and uh, somebody's coming down to get tools, I didn't want them to have to, you know, trample through here. What if I just painted something and I want to leave the doors shut or whatever? So I want to make it so all the landscaping tools are accessible through that slide door right there. And that'll be quick and easy and we won't have to worry about because if, you know, coming in and out through this door all the time, going back and forth with, you know, hedge clippers, this, that, and the other thing, people are going to be banging things, you know, whacking things. Um, and then this always has to be perfectly clear and all that stuff. So I want to keep it so for the most part, this is just a mechanical shop and might even put up like a half wall in there i don't know but um and then from out here we're able to park the truck back it up in either direction um and open up right here and that'll be the half of the trailer that has all your landscape and stuff so you can back the truck right up load up all your tools you need whatever or just park it out front whatever you need to do and uh, you won't have to actually open these doors you won't even have to go into this door and this can be separate so I still have so many things to do. I want to put horizontal braces across all of these so there's areas to, you know, just stick a can or a soda or your cell phone or, or the camera. If I'm recording, I want to be able to put the camera up on any of these areas because um, I plan on doing a lot of repairs and stuff in this area here. That's why I've got a lot of, I've got this natural light coming in. I've got a lot of LED lights here. So this whole area brightens up really nice. And I'm going to add some more lights on that side. All right, guys, and there we go. That's what I was talking about with these metal brackets. Got them bolted on. And uh, as you can see, that's carrying a lot of the load on the top of it, holding it up and towards the trailer, uh, which is, I think, uh, a good extra support for that. So we've got the bottom and the top now pulling up towards it. Um, <clears throat> it was leaning down. I, I did uh, I use this ratchet strap which I could disconnect now. I use the ratchet strap just to uh, to raise this up. What I did is I ratchet strapped and I made it so the distance between here and here was equal to here and here to know that it's perpendicular with this uh, mount here, which will mean that this is straight. So I pulled it back up. It was about a half an inch sagged backwards, maybe even three quarters of an inch. So it did flex and move a little bit, which the fact that it flexed means that it would have, you know, bounced up and down and, and, and swayed if I just kept that bottom on. I just wasn't comfortable with that. So these two, uh, you know, it's not, not very thin. It's only like uh, eighth inch steel, but the way that it's being used pulling on it like that, um, you know, that's plenty strong enough. So now we got, uh, I'm 100% confident that that's, uh, that's not going anywhere. So I did order some uh, two inch end cap plugs. I'm gonna block off all the openings uh, just so there's no sharp edges and to stop water and things from going inside there. And uh, I got this far enough away where hopefully leaves and stuff won't collect in here because I know that it gets sucked into this uh, recoil a little bit and we're able to reach in and, and uh, start it up. It's got electric start of course and the throttle. And all of that stuff is, you know, out of harm's way. So if you happen to back into a tree or a branch or something, it's not going to break any of that stuff off. So I think that's a good arrangement. Uh, all I have left to do is to drill that hole and put that pin in. And uh, there she is, mounted on the back of the dump trailer. So I'm very happy with this. This is hopefully finally something that I think has no compromises. And uh, hopefully I'll hold on to it uh, for some time to come as opposed to making a new setup each year. Um, so I did a little bit more thinking about this uh, top section 
And uh, one of the problems um, I ran into is I measured the tarp because I was curious if I raise up 30 inches in the front, come across the top and then come down 30 inches from where that tarp is, it's going to need 30 inches more in length to go up and then come across, which is your normal, and then 30 more inches to come down. Um, actually, it probably could have stopped at the top corner because this would be a, a, a solid door in the back anyways, was the plan, a swing door. So I could have stopped the tarp up there, but even that was 30 inches more that I needed of length to be able to reach all the way to the back. And I pulled the tarp out, I got about 24 inches. It's actually... Follow up on the Dodge interior. Uh, the leather has now been treated and uh, protected and seems to be holding up fairly well with the dye that I did. Um, as you can see here, that kind of stayed black. Uh, and I replaced this console lid. Uh, so that's all set. It was $24, I think, on eBay. Like I said, they had a synthetic leather one and a real leather one. The, the real leather was like 40 something dollars. And I knew this is kind of a high wear area. So I figured let's go with this synthetic and see how that works. Uh, I think the color match is really good. Um, just a little dirty. Um, you can see one little line right there, which was where the, the fabric was folded up. I'm sure sitting in the sun, that'll iron itself out. But uh, yeah, that took me about 20 minutes to do to change this lid lid cover out. Just uh, fold the fabric and it, uh, this panel comes off here and then you just uh, staple it. Not bad, it was pretty simple to do. And I think that was a big improvement over that, uh, all those rips and stuff that were in the old one. So so yeah, we're looking, uh, looking much more respectable on the inside now. Not bad for a 16 year old truck.